Greetings, everyone, and we appreciate you joining us today. Rachel, how are you doing today? I could not be any better if I tried. And I am so excited to not only be here with you, Kathleen, but also our sweet friend, Ashley, who is holding it down in the booth. So I'm also <laughs> looking forward to learning and hearing some phenomenal information for some of our heroes out there, our veterans. Yes, today we are joined by Bob Wheeler. Now, I have a very long list of all of his accomplishments, so please bear with me. Bob is a colleague here at ClaireJobs.net. I actually met him through some of the Recruit Baltimore Recruit DC events. He's a former recruiter, a Navy veteran. He moderates panels at our Clear Job Fairs, which many are in person. He's an online instructor for our Cleared Employers in Boolean Searches and How to Recruit Veterans. He advises employers as an account manager here at ClearJobs.net. He's also a contributor to the Venture Mentor Network on LinkedIn, speaker at many conferences, and finally, the host of our Military Monday webinars that we broadcast each month on LinkedIn Live and YouTube. That's quite a list. <laughs> I knew some of it, but not all of it. Bob is really an expert on job search and recruiting for cleared professionals and veterans, and with really good understanding what's happening on both sides of the desk. Welcome, Bob. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really, really excited to be part of this, uh, the podcast pieces here that have been going on for the last year and a year and a quarter, year and a half. I don't know. It's been going uh, for a while though. We're, we're coming up on a year, you know, uh, we're, we're going to have our one year anniversary. We're going to talk about that, you know, yeah. maybe in March, but, uh, yeah, it's coming up. Yeah. Rachel stuck out with me for this entire time. Well, only because you promised cake on our one year anniversary. So I'm here <laughs> for that. <laughs> Always got to be some motivation, but I do have to say, Bob, I mean, I knew you were pretty amazing, but that is a pretty incredible list of accomplishments and roles and hats that you've worn and your head wears them all so well. I think, dare I say, a Renaissance man when it comes to clear job searching and recruiting, we would love to hear from the horse's mouth. Not that we're calling you a horse, but we're just asking to learn a little bit more about your background and experience. Yeah. Well, you know what? All experience starts with bad decisions, right? Um, I'm so so passionate about uh, you know veteran transitions and job seeking because the whole reason I got into the Navy in the first place was I had gone to college and I was really not I didn't prepare myself when I got out and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went through the whole struggle of not finding a job before I joined the Navy. And then I did 20 years and I, I had decided that, look, I'm not gonna make that same mistake twice. So I was kind of uber prepared, like extra prepared, uh, thought that I wanted to be a recruiter because that's what I was doing in the Navy, I was recruiting doctors. Um, and so I did a lot of, you know, things that were good job seeking tips, which uh, and Kathleen kind of mentioned, that's how I kind of bumped into Kathleen. And I bumped into Kathleen a full year and a half before I got out of the Navy. Um, so she was kind of, mentoring me, helping me to find any job that was going to happen to be there at the right time. And lo and behold, when I was getting out, clearjobs.net was expanding. And that was over eight years ago. And I've been here ever since. But a lot of my passion came from the fact that, that I remembered what it was like. Then I worked really hard to not be in that situation again. But I also at the same time saw a lot of my colleagues in the, in the services as they were getting out. They were making, they were having actions, but they weren't making progress or they just didn't quite understand things. And so um, I kind of took it upon myself to, to try to bridge that gap to help recruiters understand job seekers better and then to help job seekers understand the, um, the hiring process better. So we want to hear a little bit more about the Military Monday programs that you do on LinkedIn Live and on YouTube. I mean, which you know, you're really dedicated in those to helping, helping transitioning veterans, transitioning service members better understand job search. So what are the things that you talk about on the show and who are some of, what are the guests that you have on your show? <clears throat> yeah. So we do the Military Monday. Uh, we, we try to go the first Monday of every month, but to be honest with, you know, sometimes schedules, holidays or something like that gets involved, but it's, uh, it's always one of the first Mondays of the month. And what we do is we talk to people from some of the government contracting agencies. A lot, sometimes it's uh, it's recruiters, sometimes it's recruiting managers, sometimes it's veteran outreach specialists, sometimes it's just project managers and things like that. But what we really try to focus on is we're trying to focus on information and things that are actionable for all veterans. So even if we're talking to somebody from an IT related field, 
we're going to talk as much as we can about things that affect all job seekers coming out of the service. And, you know, as far as like what we talk about, I think one of the greatest things we do is, is after we get a guest about a week ahead of time, we'll schedule a time where I'll talk to the guest and say like, what are you passionate about? You know, and so sometimes the person's like, I just love talking about resumes or somebody's like, I just love talking about interviews. The one guy we had a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, Sterling Vaughn from Jacobs, after talking to him and hearing his experience about being a going from a Warthog uh, Air Force you know, mechanic to becoming a recruiter with a stop at college using the GI Bill and playing college soccer. I was like, hey, we're going to talk about your experience, just your whole story. So. You know, we start with that and then we try to get what's what we can pull the the most out of that particular person. So we're not trying to jam a specific topic down somebody's throat as much as we're saying, what can we learn from this person that can help as many people as possible? So it sounds like in the course of those conversations, you've probably had the ability to pick up some tips and tricks. Is there anything in particular or some great advice that you've really had an opportunity to to hear, to share that you've heard shared on there that you think would be super important to just kind of reiterate on this conversation for our transitioning military. Yeah. You know, Rachel, one of the things I can think about is um, there's a, we did a episode with a guy by the name of Joe Pascal. He's a, a program manager for a company called InLogic down in Birmingham, Alabama or Huntsville, Alabama, actually. Um, and I remember talking to him and his big passion was that people need to understand job titles that there's so many people that come out of the military thinking I'm going to be a program manager or a project manager. They really, they, they almost in, in their own mind, they kind of overinflate their qualifications for things. And so one of his big passions was really understanding what it is you're talking about before you can go out there and start just throwing job applications all over the place. Um, yeah, so that was one of the pieces that, that I thought was really great to talk about because it, even though he's a program manager and he was talking about that, the idea of do you really understand what kind of jobs and what kind of roles you're, you're thinking about um, was something that, that translates for everybody. And, and Joe, like I said, he's part of the Veteran Mentor Network. Uh, that's a LinkedIn group. It's not affiliated with us specifically. I'm just kind of a part of it too. But that guy's been given, you know, solid, solid advice, no kidding advice, not just telling you what you want to hear, telling you what you need to hear. He gave me advice 10 years ago when I was still in the Navy. Um, and so now I got a chance to interview him on our podcast and bring that to everybody else. So um, that's just one example of the kind of cool stuff I think that we get to do on the Military Mondays. So much fun. And I know you've walked in the boots, um, So as they say. So what's one thing that you really would want folks to understand as they're transitioning from the military into <clears throat> non-military world? You know, and. When I think about the kind of thing that if you, when people ask me the question, like, what's the one thing you would tell people, it's really hard to narrow down a, a one thing. But, but what I would say is, is that, you know what, as weird as it sounds, cliches are real. So all that stuff that you seem to hear everywhere, you know, like you got to have a resume that that's matches the job description and you got to have a network. There's a reason that they, they call them cliches because they're real. I mean, there's, they really are good advice. So that's, that's one piece I would say is take that stuff that you think is just basic advice. It's people are just kind of whatever that's real advice. And then at the same time, you need a little bit more than that. You need to still be yourself. Every situation is unique. So you got to take those cliches and then apply them to your situation. So you've got to know where you're at, where you're going, and then, and then use those pieces. So that's not really one piece of advice, Rachel, as much as it's kind of like, but it's a mindset, I guess. I like that. I think that's fantastic. So, Bob, you have an opportunity to interact with cleared recruiters, both at our cleared job fairs at the panels, but also with all of the LinkedIn uh, webinars that you've been doing. So can you give us a little peek behind the hiring curtain for our listeners, sort of what are some of the things that most cleared professionals or transitioning veterans don't understand or aren't familiar with when they're going for a job and they don't understand what's going on behind the scenes? <clears throat> yeah, well, I, you know, Kathleen, I think there's a few things. There's one of the things that they don't always understand the hiring process, which is a big piece, because if you don't understand the process that you're going through, then you you kind of don't know Sometimes you think that you're doing things that are helpful, but they may not be, you know. Um, but I think if I had it like overall, what I would say is military veterans, you, we understand risk management really well. No matter which branch of the service you were in, risk management is like pounded into your head. But you have to think about the fact that from the from the people who are the, the, these companies, these government contractors, hiring is a risk management decision. 
and, and you know what? And you're the risk. You know, so everything that you do has to be about how am I going to mitigate this risk? How am I going to make them think that I'm not going to leave in five months or six months? They're not going to have to let me go because I either couldn't do the job or maybe because I just didn't even like the job. You know, look at it everywhere from being like, okay, this is a, they're taking a risk on me. So what am I going to do to either, you know, like I said, mitigate the risk? Or maybe if there's things that you just really don't know, what are you going to do to kind of say, well, this is how I'm going to make the risk a little bit less? But if you look at it from a risk management situation, uh, you'll probably be able to find the types of things that you need to do to make yourself a better candidate. So another fun thing that I know, well, is probably not fun for a lot of people, but that you on Military Monday review resumes. And this seems to be sort of that big sticking point for so many people. They take their resume and they have their buddies look at it or they, you know, just do whatever they did in the military and they think it's fine. What are some of the tips, the top, you know, one or two resume tips that you constantly are saying on your Military Monday resume reviews that you hope that people will really take away from our discussion today? Yeah, I have actually have a, a, a pet phrase that I say, you need to distill your resume, don't dilute your resume. Um, you know, you need, you need to basically take it and focus it towards a job. And, and I know that it's tough because when you first start out, um, one of the first things you're doing at, at transition class is like, let's make you a resume. And the resume they're going to have you make is going to be based on all the stuff you did in the military because they want you to realize how, you know, how much soft skills and things like that that you're taking out of there. And that's fine. But a real resume has to focus on a job. And so once you focus it on a specific job, you need to pull out a bunch of that other fluff stuff, you know, of things that, that don't really matter to a job. If you've got a combat lifesaver, you know, certification, that doesn't mean nothing if you're applying for, if you're going to be a, you know, an information technology person, you know, focus it on the job that you're trying to do. Um, so, so that's probably the biggest piece. And then the second piece is, is kind of goes in with that too, is it is not a fit rep. Do not just cut and paste your things about all of your fitness reports or your, your evaluations where you're using, you know, not just, and it's not just acronyms and, and buzzwords. It's the, the stuff that got you promoted isn't the, isn't the same things that are going to get you this job. It can be good stuff, but it's not what they're looking for. So don't even, don't even put it in there. So another term that you use a lot or phrase that I've heard you say a lot is marinate in the industry <laughs> that you're going to be part of. And I love that, but I don't think a lot of transitioning veterans understand what that means or its importance in their overall transition. So you want to describe that a little bit more? Because I think that's one of your top tips. Well, thank you. Uh, and that's because most veterans are good with barbecue and meat. Um, but I don't want to be making any too many broad things. But we know about marinating, right? You know, marinating means it sits for a while in the sauce. And you can't, you can, there's no way you can marinate a piece of meat in five minutes. So if you're going to marinate in your industry, you have to be around it. You have to surround yourself in it. And it slowly kind of becomes part of what you're doing. And things like podcasts, you know, things like going to conferences, uh, things like talking to people who are doing the business, maybe even the same thing you're doing, but doing it outside the military, you just, it just takes a long time and you can't, you can't rush it. So you have to always be around and you have to always be willing to absorb something from everybody, from every interaction, from everything that you do. You have to be able to say, what can I take from this? And then you take it and you hold on to the good stuff. You hold on to the flavor, you know, um, and eventually you're going to get thrown on that grill and hopefully you're, you know, successful. Well, now I'm both hungry and thirsty. We've <laughs> talked about distilleries. We've talked about marinade. I mean, pretty good stuff here. No, I love it. And I think that is so important. It's just about soaking it in, taking it from every angle. No, no advice is bad advice. You can just take it and weigh it and determine where you go and get on that grill. Bob told mm -hmm. you, get on the grill. But I know, Bob, something else you know a little bit about are, are clear job fairs. Um, and so what are some advice that you would have for folks that are coming to the job fairs? Are there recommendations or anything that you could say that would really kind of help them stand out or just have a level of success at these job fairs? Yeah, I think, I think job fairs are terrific. I think people should start going to job fairs about a year out before they get out just because it's a way to it, it clicks in your brain like, no kidding, I'm going to get out. It's like this this weird thing of like, 
you know, I'm really here and I'm really, you know, wearing something besides my uniform. Um, so I think you should start going. And also it, it means that when you go earlier, the mistakes that you make are kind of lessened. It's the same with an ORM thing. You know, if you, the, the mistake, if you say something stupid, you got a year out, don't worry about it. Um, but you can practice doing those things. Um, I also say that if you're going to come to job fairs, you should take a look and see what kind of job fairs are there because there's, you know, our job fairs are for people with security clearances. So that's, you know that if you're going to come to a job fair like ours, you're going to be trying to leverage that thing. You know, sometimes there can be a job fair that just says veterans, you know, job fair. Well, remember, veterans, not a skill set. You know, they could be looking for all kinds of stuff. Uh, if you go to a job fair on your local base, there's going to be a lot of local jobs that are going to be there. So figure out why you're going to the job, uh, to the job fair. But then when you go, you, you definitely want to talk to as many people as possible. Um, don't don't hog somebody's time, some recruiter's time. Remember, if you're in the line and there's a, there's seven people behind you, they're not going to have a great conversation with you because that recruiter is looking over your shoulder thinking, I hope those people don't leave because I'm talking. to. Now, if you want to have a longer conversation, come back towards the end of the job fair. Things kind of calm down, you know, and at that point, those those folks have paid sometimes thousands of dollars to be there. They're going to they're going to stick around uh, and for a better conversation to learn more, you come back towards the end. Uh, and they've got a lot more time for you. So you're very active in the community. And I, that's one thing I just love about working with you is that we always trade, you know, did you see this event? Did you hear about this webinar? So where are some of the places that you're going to be either in person or presenting online over the next few months? Yeah, well, coming up uh, real quick, I'm going to be in St. Louis, Missouri for uh, Logistics Officers Conference. Uh, yeah, Rachel, you're a, you're a St. Louis person there. Um, so I'm going to be there. Uh, my presentation is on the Wednesday. I think it's March the 28th, I believe. I, I could be wrong, but uh, but I'll be doing a presentation for, for transitioning folks at the Military Logistics uh, Conference, which is really, really cool. Uh, then just a few weeks after that, I'll be back at one of our job fairs, April 13th in Tyson's Corner. That's for all clearance levels. And I'll be doing a um, uh, we do a panel discussion with with usually three recruiters uh, for job seekers ahead of time. So that'll kick off like at one o'clock. The job fair starts at two. So if you want to see me in person, those are two places. Um, and then of course I got I got Military Mondays coming up on on the LinkedIn thing there, and um, you can always find me on LinkedIn too. But that's that's what I got coming up, I guess. So if folks aren't going to hop the plane or maybe drive in the car to St. Louis or mm. headed to Tyson Corner, how else can they get a hold of you? I know you mentioned LinkedIn, but are there any other ways that they can get a hold of you for some more great advice yeah, and grilling the best. recipes? Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> I'll give you a great Guamanian chicken marinade. Um, the one of the... One of the uh, the best way really is LinkedIn. If you find me on LinkedIn, because I'm I live on LinkedIn all day long, um, so I, when, if you if you hit me up, it, unless I'm out of town for something, I'll respond pretty quickly, um, and I'm happy to share um, share some tips, share some share some groups, things like that with you. Um, you can also find me, you know, on Twitter at uh, at Sailor Doc is my my Twitter handle, but I. I I don't do the Twitter as much as I do the LinkedIn. So honestly, uh, Rachel, the, the, the very best way uh, to hit me up is to find me on, on LinkedIn, clearjobs.net, uh, Bob Wheeler. You can't miss me. I love that you called it the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing else to say after the Twitter. The Bob <laughs> Wheeler right. is amazing. Is he not, Kathleen? <laughs> he is definitely amazing. And I, I love that you're part of our team here at clearjobs.net, that your passion for helping our transitioning military folks is just overflowing. We have so many veterans who do work with us. We have military spouses. We have veterans mm -hmm. who are also military spouses. So obviously this is a passion we have, and it's so great to have you out in the community doing it. So thank you so much for your time today, Bob. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I love it. And uh, this, like I said, this podcast series, it has been, I've listened to almost all of them. They're, they're terrific.